had actually planned to discuss the continue the discussion on the communication requirement for what we call the community communications but there is hardly any point in doing that with about 10 people here so let me declare this as an open house where i would request the few participants here to ask questions on any aspect of communication skills and we'll have a small discussion and debate around such questions sir i don't really have a question but i had this small uh, suggestion or a request if you like uh, so basically uh, i like this proposal that you had given that you know we record videos giving some presentation in at the beginning and then at the end right right but uh, in between it would have been better if there could have been some feedback on our performance so that we would have known that based on our video uh, based on our presentation these are the areas that we need to improve upon oh what we have got in this course is really general guidelines you know that we need to follow which is okay and we might uh, pick up on a few of them and see improvement but it would have been i don't know if it is possible with such a large class in this course uh, but yeah that could have been a better thing to do and more helpful in my opinion so this is one point that you make feedback on first video presentation individual feedback i think that's a very good point i wish it had occurred to me earlier or you had made this session earlier we could have done that but even now there is a time uh, my team of tas and firuza and others and i personally will try to look at as many videos as possible but these have been uploaded on a link which are visible to everyone so here is another point that i'll make this is an excellent suggestion and i take it i should have done it actually it did not occur to me frankly and if i ever take this course again i will do that right up front but you see that is where a collaborative community would have helped so for example all of you have recorded your presentation because it was part of the course activity but none of you have bothered to check your friends presentations to give comments right so we are not intrinsically collaborative in nature that's the point i'm trying to make and this is the exalted crowd the crowd at iit bombay cs department m tech students are the leaders so if the leaders intrinsically don't think of such collaboration then there is some lacuna that we face collectively i would like to strongly suggest that while i will implement this although it is late as we say in madhya pradesh there i had durust ayat so at least we'll do it but i think it is equally important that a collaborative community acts on such things independent of external inputs all of us wait for someone else to create a collaborative community like what is a class it's a compulsory collaborative community you are required to attend come together etc etc can we not start doing it independent so that is the point that i would like to make in fact this is the reason why in uh, all major online courses where peer assessment is done the peer assessment is made part of your own evaluation so if i submit an assignment like i submit a presentation video it will not be rated by my peers unless i rate at least three or four other peers so this point is well taken yeah actually during the presentations they had circulated forms where you were supposed to rate people in your own group right so but those forms were not really given back as in they were not put up where we could oh is that so hmm. but i thought they were they were publicly notified because that was the purpose and that's a mistake are the forms not on the moodle assessment huh okay. yeah but what checking is required meaning major goof up on our part i apologize so it's that was the whole purpose actually so
So what, what was it called? Forms, assessment forms. I now recall a brief discussion that I had with Firuza on this. Uh, while uh, as far as I am concerned there is no issue on this, but there was one fear expressed by someone who was listening into the conversation in my room that I might not like my assessment by six people to be seen by hundred others. So that was just one point. That's not an excuse, but we deferred. I remember I deferred the decision on this, and then I never revisited that. So I apologize for that. But I agree with you that there is no harm. After all, marks in a or grades in a course are always put up on the board at the end of the day. So if 20 other people know my grade, I don't crib about it because that is what it is. So we'll treat this as a small coherent group and we'll announce this group. This we shall do immediately, today or tomorrow. We'll have to discover where those forms are. I hope they are kept somewhere. Any idea who is the custodian of those forms? Or one of my staff members? My staff members sometimes behave like write-only desk. That means you give them paper, they file them properly and keep them till eternity. So, we'll have to make it read right desk, right? we'll have to risk it, all that. Okay, I forgot to mention, there is one more assignment, which we usually in the past used to give pretty early in the course, but we have deferred it considering that other aspects of literature survey, proper writing, etc. are more important. And this is about uh, writing a summary of TED Talks. This exercise we had given last year. I think the entire class is familiar with TED Talks with many people who have seen TED Talks and so on. But as I mentioned, we rarely take down a pencil and paper and write down the summary of a TED Talk after we weave it. So this is an exercise. You will be required to view two TED Talks. That means about 36, 40 minutes of your time you'll have to spend. Each TED Talk is about 18 minutes and you'll have to write a summary of that TED talk, which will require another 15 minutes. So a total of one and a half hours you will have to spend. Uh, the, this assignment submission will be on 12th or 15th, that will be the last submission. And that along with your literature survey will count for your passing. So what we have done is, we have listed 10 TED talks with serial number 0 to 9. So you have to do that uh, as per assignment. That means your last digit of the roll number decides which TED talk you will see. Whether you like that topic or not, you try to make those topics generic. Then there is a list of additional uh, 8 or 10 TED talks, of which you can choose any one. So one is a pre-assigned TED talk and the other is any of your choice. And you just submit uh, the two summaries by giving your roll number. So that assignment also Firuza is putting up. We'll open it up now. So you can weave it between now and 12th April, whenever you want. 12th April will be the, I think 12th April we have a lecture, right? So 11th April will be there. 12th is when we will have the mock interviews. I'll set up the schedule shortly. Okay, any other point? I want to know exactly what uh, you as uh, our other faculty members, etc., they want to see in our report, seminar report, for example. Huh. What, what are the, what report will be called a good report? Uh, means oh. in, generally in seminar we study two, three or five or ten papers. Yes. And will it be just a, our understanding of the papers? You want to see some kind of conclusion, some classification? Yeah, so generally what the academic community looks at when the community views at a seminar report. So let me describe that first. You are very right, the meat of the matter 
has to be your critical understanding of some papers that you have reviewed pertaining to a subject. But that is only the crux of the seminar report. It's not the entire seminar. What is more important is your critical views on what papers you have seen. So one thing is to describe what those papers describe in summary. That is of course essential. But that is not adequate. You are expected to give your own views on them. Like the completeness of the work or inadequacy or any error in your opinion. That is one. Second, there has to be a coherent whole that should come out of your literature survey. So that is why, although it is not an MTech project report, a stage one report or a PhD thesis, it is expected to be written on similar lines. That should be an introduction section. We should say, what is the problem that you are looking at? Then in the literature survey, of course, you, you do the bulk of your work. But in your concluding remarks, you must indicate your own critical analysis of the entire thing that you have studied. Does it adequately solve the major problem? What are the issues still remaining or unsolved? Or in your opinion, how some work could be extended? The reason is that in our at least MTech kind of environment, a seminar is supposed to lead to an MTech project. Now, how does that lead? Is it that you surgically cut your seminar report and say now you start MTP, the title is same. That is not so. The whole idea is that the literature survey that you carry out as part of your seminar report is supposed to form the basis of a much larger work in your MTP that you will do later. I mean that is the expectation. It would apply even for a PhD. If, you, if, if a PhD scholar is submitting a seminar report, it is expected to help in some way or the other the larger problem that one is solving. Now what is expected in a seminar report is some commentary by you on the impact of whatever you have studied on the larger problem that you have in mind. So two lakuni may happen. One is you have not conceived of any larger problem at all. You are in a mundane fashion, you are just your guide and you have decided these five papers, you have studied them and submitted them. That is not a good seminar. So if I am a panel of examiners, I will look for some originality. Originality not in the form of research contribution, but originality in the form of your thoughts on critical analysis of whatever has been done and your ability to connect it to something larger. Whether it's going to be your MTP or a research problem or not, it doesn't matter. Something larger. Now that will be the difference between a good report and an excellent report. Of course, a poor report will be one which is written in very shoddy English, which does not list all the uh, references properly and blatantly plagiarizes sentences from the quoted report. Then such reports will get a fail grade. But I'm saying, if I understand your question, you want to know beyond the good report. So I think in my opinion, beyond the good report, these are two things. A, your ability first to conceive a larger problem and connect your work to that larger problem. And B, your critical analysis of whatever you have surveyed. You should be able to say that you don't agree with this observation or you think some more work should have been done. Or you think that in future so much more has to be done in these areas which are covered by this research. Means what is your own conclusion about the whole thing? Your own thoughts? So I think that is what will make a difference. This is what generally the examiner's panel will be looking at. The difference between a good and an excellent report. So let me write it. So what are the three points that we made?
This is the first thing I said, ability to connect your survey to a larger problem. And the second one is, When I say by others, I mean others whose papers you have surveyed. So, uh, in fact, let me refine the second one more. Suppose the each research paper that you study, suppose it was being presented as a seminar report or an R&D project report. Imagine yourself to be the examiner of that. One way is, of course, to summarize what a research paper says. The other way is to look at that research paper as if it is presented to you as an examiner and you are assessing the effectiveness, the adequacy, the correctness of that research. Then what questions will come to your mind? Now that is your own critique. You feel this is inadequate, you feel there, there is some error here or you feel that more work should have been done or you feel that it can be extended further. So you implicitly act as an examiner of that unseen person whose research paper you are surveying. That will give you an, uh, a chance to articulate your own critique. Now coming back to your own seminar report, and I think an excellent seminar report in addition to a good well-written survey of literature should contain these two. I hope this answer is reasonable, satisfactory. Not easy to do that because this will require additional work to do. That is why seminar report is not just literature survey. It's something more than that. And of course, an MTech project first stage or a annual, uh, uh, what you call the uh, PhD scholars annual uh, report is much more than either of these because that will have to um, that will have to give the entire background, the conceptualization, probably it will have some design elements, experimentation, whatever. all that. Any other question? So I have a suggestion uh, that uh, like uh, after coming here, we don't get many occasions where we can uh, talk to a crowd, talk in the sense present to a crowd. So as it is, we get an opportunity here of having almost like 100, 150 students. And the major, uh, one of the major fears a student faces is how to talk to an uh, audience of this size. So there are very less occasions after coming here that we get this chance. So as it is, this uh, class is on communication skills. So I feel there should be one session where uh, each student gets to talk to such a large number of uh, audience. And uh, the non-trivial part of it is uh, like, the presentation which we had which, uh, was of say five minutes, which wasn't uh, like we could have managed that because five minutes is a small time and uh, the topics were of our choice and non-technical. So that was manageable. But talking on a, a technical topic for say 10-15 minutes to such a large crowd is a non-trivial task and we don't get to do it uh, except for the seminar presentations on the MTP presentations. So be before we, and this is, a, according to me, this is a right time because at the end of this semester, we anyways, uh, most of us present the seminar presentation. So having such a presentation in, during this course will be a, uh, say, practice to the presentation which we would make. And uh, as it is, that presentation will be hardly some 10, 20 people amongst them. So if we can present to such a large crowd over here, then obviously we can do better there. So. so if you recall, apart from organizing the preliminary recorded presentations, I also conducted a session where people were to speak extempore. 
what you are suggesting is not an extempore speech, but a prepared talk. Yeah. And of a slightly longer duration. Yeah, and mostly it should be technical because talking on a random topic, which is non-technical, is slightly obviously easier than a technical topic. The difference is you don't want that topic to be your seminar report itself. That any way you are going to present. Yeah. Uh, or in addition to that, perhaps. Yeah. The major thing I wanted to say is, uh, uh, that, like the topics which we had, the presentation which you said, uh, anybody can have some basic idea and they can talk about it anyways. But talking on a, uh, say a technical topic is uh, really difficult to such a large crowd. We get, uh, say, standing so on stage. There is a there is a logistics problem in that. I mean, I have absolutely no hesitation in arranging such talks here for the whole class. But take a 10-minute talk, for example. Yeah. Now, if there is a 10-minute talk, you require five minutes for overlap. Yeah. So that means in 55 minutes, you can at most have four talks. Yeah. There are 120 people. So we'll require to devote 30 lecture sessions yeah. on just this activity. And let me tell you, initially, for the first session, the second session, say first four or eight talks, all 110 people will come and listen attentively because there is a novelty element in it. On the third lecture, you will find attendance to be as thin as this. Yeah. In the fourth lecture, there will be exactly four people present who are supposed to speak on that. Yeah. <laughs> so it will defeat the purpose. Maybe that is the reason why I made the initial time that groups of people, because there would be about 15 to 20 or 30 people in that group, and that would roughly the largest group that you will face in your seminar. Of course, the intention was to inculcate uh, the uh, ability to speak to a group of uh, sort of research kind of students. Yeah. But stage fear, let me tell you, it is not a question of absolute number of people. If you can face 30 people confidently, you can face 300 and you can face 3,000. The first time whenever you do it, that is whenever you go to a larger number, uh, you, will, you will have some issues, but otherwise, once the ice breaks, there is no difference between the size of the crowd. The essential aspect is to get rid of the stage fear. Yeah. And that stage fear, uh, I mean, the whole effort here was to actually call you up and, uh, uh, and insist that you remove that stage fear. To that extent, I like the observation that he made that an immediate feedback or at least display of the observations or grades by others would have perhaps been useful. It, I doubt whether people will revisit their presentations now. So, how do we handle this uh, logistics? Any suggestion? So, the suggestion is do it selectively. While I agree with this, there is a problem. If I am a person who has a stage fear, I will be the last one to admit it. Because, you see, the complex of stage fear is actually part of a much larger fear complex. So, whenever I am afraid of admitting anything to myself, that is the worst case of fear, no? I am afraid of admitting something to myself. And that reflects in my inability to admit it to others. So, I am just thinking loudly, what if we do the following? We do the first set of presentations, those five minute topics, exactly as you said. But instead of stopping there, we quickly assess from the gradings, we make them into A, B, C category. Now, I will personally review those C category people and we'll check where the problem is stage fear rather than just inability to act. Let's say there are 10 or 15 such people. Okay. I will not announce their grades or something. Then I will also ask an opinion if a few others.
first come, first serve. Some four or five, right? Now we will have a group of 15 or 16 people who really need that help, but who may not come out on their own. But now that is made a class exercise. And it could be shown. So we'll do it selectively. Does this make sense to you? I mean, you ask this question first. So we will still have the full audience, but we'll have about 15 or 16 people speaking for 10 minutes. But this time it will be a technical topic, not necessarily a seminar topic, right? So it should be a generic technical topic, you mean. That, that looks like a feasible thing, yeah. One more thing. Yeah. That uh, uh, whatever we did here, it was class-wise. But uh, everyone has different difficulty in the communications. So uh, in a large class, when we are doing something, almost 60, 70 people think, or it is my, maybe my best observation, that it is not for me. I already know this. So in large class, in communication skill seems a uh, bad combination. Uh, like uh, if I have difficulty in pronunciation, I need speech therapy like thing, something that should be individualized to me. And other one may have different like uh, other like uh, stammering or something grammatical mistakes. So those have different needs and we are making them as a class. That maybe should we look at something like that. So if I were to write the gist of what you are saying, we should have an individualized correction mechanism. So wherever I lack, I should be given a feedback saying, I must correct this. She must correct something else. He must correct something else. That, that's what you mean. Very good point. So I think a strategy is emerging for future courses, combining everything from what he started. Yeah, he has some more observation. So at the beginning of the class, you mentioned that you will put up a Moodle form uh, for those who would want to present for the for their second round of presentations. So we could instead have it for this thing, like uh, having it in front of a large crowd and uh, have uh, most of the class come in and give in their feedback to the person who's presenting. So it's like those who would like to uh, overcome their stage fear or something, they can also get in their individualized feedback. Oh, so what you're saying is we could implement it this time itself. Yeah. That's an excellent idea. Like at least ten, the first 10 people, like first come, first serve, whoever gives their names, they can present in. Sorry? No, what we'll do is mock interviews anyway would be held by external people and they would not like to hold it in presence of everyone. So that we'll hold. But that what we'll do is then we can schedule it sometime later. See, the purpose of those mock interviews is to benefit all of you to actually see a recorded interview. So that, while that is important, it is not urgent. Because I don't need the whole class for that. So I could even request my industry friends to come after the NSEP and conduct the interviews, mock interviews like this. I will tell them that we'll be recording them and we'll be making it available on the Moodle. Moodle will still be active. All of you will be able to visualize those uh, 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 recorded interviews. And that would be a good idea. But this seems to be more important and relevant. So on 12th and 15th, we could have this. We will combine all of the things that we have just said. We will go through those assessments. We will find out for ourselves who, in our opinion, have a stage fear. And we will also ask for additional names, possible. And we will have them present on a technical topic on 12th April and 15th April here. Is that is that a good idea? Thank you for this suggestion. So 12th and 14th, there will be general presentations by a select few whom I will name and I will also request some additional names. And these 
should be on general technical topics, right? We should not keep too long a duration of presentation because, uh, I mean, the class is attending compulsorily, they should not get bored. Should we also have the assessment by the entire class, like we did that last time? Correct. Uh, can you do me a favor? Now, you have all seen the assessment forms last time which we had designed. That we had applied our mind and we had come up with some parameters. But can you make suggestions on what other parameters you think should be included on which the audience can comment meaningfully and which could be useful to them? Any set of additional parameters, characteristics that you would like to visualize, but something which can be done very easily. I mean, we can't expect a, a, a audience member to write a detailed critique. So it will have to be text. So what kind of gradation or assessment could be done different from the form that we had already used? If anyone has any idea. One or two minutes of your talk. Agree. So I think timing is also important. No, no. So put this in words and send an email. Yeah. Okay. But this should be capturable in an assessment form. Yes. Yeah, so I wanted to just say, like, whether you understood what the presenter spoke in the first one minute of his introduction. Agree. But this you have to communicate in written form so that the assessor understands. Fair enough. Very good. Yeah. So, so I have three points to make. Yeah. The first one is that I agree with Gary that, uh, uh, you know, making the whole class uh, really assess things is good. But yeah, and it seems that we are really going into this direction of collaborative communities because for such a large class, it actually makes sense. But uh, I feel that, uh, you know, you somehow need to uh, initiate uh, people into this uh, act of assessing. Uh, Come again? Sorry, I missed the last sentence. You need to initiate people into this act of assessing. I mean, not everybody knows. Uh, if, if let's say I listen to somebody talking, uh, at most, the I think uh, what I can really comment on is if I liked it or not, if I understood it or not. I, I don't think, it, even if uh, I looked at the assessment form, it was difficult for me to decide should I give him a 4 or a 5 or a 3, right? So there has to be some some sort of initiation. Only then the feedback by the whole class would be useful. So that is the first point. The second point is regarding stage fear that Niharika made. Niharika. So, uh, so I believe that, uh, so I think last year uh, with people in my batch, and the TAs in my batch, what uh, we had done is, I mean, what you had done is that you had asked them to present on a technical topic. But I strongly feel that uh, if you want to remove stage fear, Hold the mic. Oh, if you want to remove stage fear, uh, it's actually important that you allow people to do it on any topic that they like. Because they already feel in comfortable. Fact, in fact, that, that, was the, that was my point in scheduling an extempore kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it is not a pre-prepared thought or something like that, but it's something your ability to speak gener generically. No, ability to speak in general is fine. So that is one thing. Huh. But I, I feel that the current format where you ask people to prepare on any topic of their choice and huh. come and present, huh. I think that's fair enough because oh. then your focus is removed from the uh, actual content that you want to speak and your focus is solely on facing the audience and really speaking something. And that I feel is a good uh, way to remove stage So fear. fair enough. So you agree with a general topic being pre-assigned where people prepare for them? No, I want people to choose their own topics. Choose their own topic. I so see. I think whatever we did in this course was fine. Okay. Because stage fair is not about what I'm going to speak, it's about so, so going let, there and speaking let something. Let me add one caveat to this. Choose your own topic, but not your seminar topic. That's okay. I and mean, it should be made clear that you're not making a seminar-like presentation. You're actually making a general presentation on the topic of your choice. Is that okay? Right. That's a good suggestion. We'll take that. Right. Coming back to the seminar report and all that, 
uh, just one suggestion from me is that uh, can you provide us three reports maybe thesis or mtp report or btech report or seminar report one excellent one good and one very poor that you consider There is a problem in that. Uh, if somebody gives you my seminar report which was adjudged poor, I'll feel very bad about it. No, uh, uh, that solution is so, that. Uh, no, no. So I will either have to seek permission from that person or I will have to prepare that entire report as if it is being prepared for a blind review. Yeah, blind review. Yes, that's what it I It is want. very difficult to do that because usually from the list of references and everything, you can figure out who that gentleman <laughs> or lady is. So that's a bit dangerous. Uh, I will talk to my colleagues and find out what can be done about it. About oh. excellent, there is absolutely no issue. Right. I think we should be able to get that. So let me put it this way. I don't know whether I'll be able to do it very quickly now, but over today and tomorrow, I'll circulate a mail to my own colleagues saying that from this suggestion has come from the communication course. And if you care to share a soft copy of any one of your past students whose report was adjudged excellent by the committee, then my uh, uh, friends in the class would like to look at them. I think you will get three or four. I will immediately put them on the moon. Okay. That's a, so this one is done. Uh, good, uh, maybe. But uh, poor, I would rather avoid. So in fact, you, you look at this and say, whatever is not this is poor. <laughs> Draw your own conclusion about the poverty. Let us, let us look at the richness first. But excellent idea. Thank you. Are you going to help us with poor reports? No. <laughs> so I think in addition, in, you know, in addition to uh, just giving out excellent reports, I mean, or reports that have been just as excellent, it would be instructive to, uh, you know, uh, mark them and say that this why was they done excellently. Oh, yeah. Why they were considered excellent? Yeah. I mean, things that make it excellent. Uh, so, you know, some I, I some objective you, analysis of the report that no, really so helps. what I can do is, I can request my colleagues that this time when they judge the seminar reports and give grades, then for excellent reports, would they care to write? a few lines of commentary so that I can use this next year for my next class. But it is not fair to, for me to ask my colleague, last year I evaluate kara tha, wo yaad karke, now rewrite those comments. They say, go fly a kite fatak. Not interested. It's too much of work, yaar. No, at least, at least for one report this can be done, right? If you remember, there, there was this one good student who had done a wonderful report. Let me pull out his report and Make a few comments no, no, about I will, it. I will add that comment. My worry is that uh, because of that requirement, many of the colleagues will not respond at all to the mail. <laughs> this is an extra work that I am asking. See, I am too old and senior to be ignored completely. But I am still a, a faculty member like them. So they will do this to me, but not publicly. So they will just keep quiet. Not, not very useful, no? What should be our priority? To get a good sample of excellent reports or to necessarily get each one with the comment? That is the option now, practical option. I think the first choice is better, right? If we get five or six excellent reports, I mean reports which are considered excellent by people, then that should be a good example. Let me do it in two stages. Let me get this and those who send this, to them, I will write a mail saying, will you please also say why it is Excel? That's a good idea because those four or five friends, I can even make a phone call, pester them, visit them, and get a few lines. It's a good idea. Chal. Oh, my God, we're already late. Thank you. <laughs>